that, uh... Oh, it's from that. How's it going? We had some wind, uh, a little bit of wind. And I'm just looking at, this was dead standing, now it's dead floating. It has snapped in half from the wind, and it's resting here, wedged in between, like a, like a slingshot over here, and then wedged, or resting on top of the thinnest little piece of dead standing ever. Man, all right, that's gonna, I'm gonna have to clean some of this up. I uh, went out into the woods this morning because I was going to hook this camera up actually and do some time lapse. Um, but I've noticed so many trees have fallen. Uh, it looks like I now have my remainder of the week's projects ahead of me. I got to start uh, bucking some wood and getting it up to the woodshed uh, and toss it in there to season for the winter. If you've watched the almost one hour solo camping nine autumn projects video, some of this maple syrup uh, evaporator footage will look familiar but it's not a direct yoink so keep watching i've re-edited it re-edited edited it um and i've added a bunch of new footage because we did parts two and parts three to the painting process plus some stuff with the woodshed so we're you know totally sorted out when that kind of minus five hits and we got to start tapping ourselves some trees so i know five months doesn't seem like uh, an urgent thing, but uh, whew, when that sap goes flowing, you want to be ready. So, anyway, that's what we're doing. Thanks for hanging out. our maple evaporator um, and I made it last fall I guess um, picked up two old barrels cleaned them all out I bought this kit that provides the door and the chimney mount and then I purchased you know the rest of the stuff cut all the holes and then the bungs work really well too on the barrel is sort of extra draft and while I had a really good burn uh, for many days and then burned off all the paint that was on it, and then I painted it through our use this year in making maple syrup. Um, you know, more metal got exposed. So, just gonna rough it up, and then uh, we'll put another couple coats of uh, stove paint on it. Next time that we have um, dry weather, I'll come out and I'll do another coat, maybe two. So not quite a can to do a full coat, um, but that was just a very light 
you know, coat. So we'll do a little bit more. And uh, yeah, I think it's looking pretty good. And then we'll be ready for maple syrup season. today uh, came out here this morning but we had a very frosty frosty evening everything was covered in just a beautiful little white coat so couldn't quite get to the job at hand right away today I've, <laughs> I've decided to bring my respirator it's one of those things you know I always paint with a respirator airbrushing and anytime I use any kind of aerosol I use a respirator uh, I had brought this in the house for uh, doing a bunch of work with the pantry when I was drywalling uh, under the stairs and um, and the last time I was out here I was like ah I'm outside doesn't matter I'm not in an enclosed space anyway looking at that footage in my my little black nose I got the respirator so we're a little later in the day than ideal but I'm gonna toss the coat on this and then uh, and then we'll sort of see where we go All right one more coat We got ourselves uh, our second coat on there. I have my Kawartha Lakes dinner jacket on because um, it's it's getting cold. About 15 minutes or so to let this set up and then I can put on a third coat. Then I let it air cure for 48 hours and then uh, I'll build a small fire in the firebox and uh, that'll sort of cure all the paint and everything will be sorted out.
Okay, so we've put three cans of stove paint on there. Uh, nope, I'm incorrect. Three cans of high heat paint. I didn't even splurge for stove paint. So I just bought like Rust-Oleum high heat paint. Let's not kid ourselves. This is an old oil barrel. So I think I may have spent nine bucks a can on that spray paint. If I can get five, six years out of this thing, I'm gonna be laughing. The door, the damper, the legs, the chimney bracket, those are all cast iron. I think I got those on Amazon for like 70 bucks, 75 bucks. When this barrel eventually rusts out, five, six, seven years from now, uh, I'll get another barrel, I'll cut some holes out of it, I'll unbolt that stuff, I'll bolt it onto the next one. They're all cast iron. I'm probably gonna get 30, 40 years out of it. So if I gotta spend, let's say 10 bucks a year on a can of spray paint, uh, I think I'm doing okay. Maple syrup in Canada is real big business. And um, if you were to buy an evaporator, like from a maple syrup company, don't snicker, they exist. You're 1500 bucks just to get in the game on like a basic entry level. Uh, it's huge business. You know, the United States, other countries, maybe us, I don't know. There's big vaults filled with gold bars, you know, behind a big door. And there's always Matt Damon or Tom Cruise. Maybe it's Scarlett Johansson. They're trying to break in and steal those gold bars. And they never consider that while their duffel bag's big enough to hold them, those are heavy. All of that aside, in Canada, on a national level, we have the same thing, except it's barrels of maple syrup. I think we produce something like 80 or 85% of the world's maple syrup. I've got 21 trees that I've tapped here. Uh, I'm not making money off of this. I'm not selling it. It's like a 40 to one kind of deal to make maple syrup. It takes a lot of sap to make a little bit of syrup. So friends and family are basically what we're doing it for. And like getting out of the house at the end of uh, March, early March, at the end of February, early March, into April, like just having some fun outside. That weird kind of time between, uh, you know, the winter and the spring when things are still snowy, but they're also kind of mucky and it's just bleh. That's why we like to make maple syrup and it's delicious. I don't, I don't know everything, you know, and I tend to uh, ask a million questions. I'm kind of like a like a four-year-old constantly walking around going, but why? 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 But why? 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 But why? I'm that guy. So, you know, I get these ideas in my head. I'm either YouTube, uh, Google, library, bookstore, or finding an old-timer wiser than me and peppering them with questions until they grumpily ask me to get the hell out of here. So I had this idea uh, and of course, my bright idea happened like early January, a couple years ago of like, hey, we've got maple trees on our property. I bet I could make syrup. Uh, how do you do that? And I Googled it a little bit and there's a bunch of different bits of information. So I found a book uh, from chapters and the book was a reprint, but I don't, I, I can't recall off the top of my head if it was one of those um, Frontier Canada guides that was reprinted or if it was just like a book out of the 70s that was reprinted. It walked you through species identification and what maple syrup was and a bunch of different ways to build evaporators and arches all the way up to like, here, maple syrup company. One of the ways it suggested was using like foundation stone. I don't know what that is, but I know what cinder block is. Popped my kid in the truck and drove a couple of cities to the big orange store and picked up a bunch of cinder blocks um, and some stovepipe and some elbows. Because I had this bright idea in the winter time, the woodlot still had two feet of snow and probably a half foot of ice on the ground. Um, I couldn't drive the truck back here because I hadn't plowed. I couldn't dig out where I wanted to put the evaporator because the ground was frozen. So I built me a big ass like, I don't know, eight by eight, nine by nine bonfire. And I burned that for close to 12 hours. Uh, I know I started the day with coffee and I ended the day with a whiskey. And then I had to hook my ice fishing sled up to the quad and I started towing cinder blocks back um, and all the gear. And I threw down a couple bags of pea gravel to try and level out the ground and I built myself a little U uh, of cinder blocks. Um, that squished a chimney in place. 
elbow chimney and then I had an elbow at the top which I figured would keep the rain and snow out of it. The guide that I had read had suggested, you know, mortar and rebar and all of that stuff, but it's the middle of winter, so, and I knew it was temporary. And I found a couple of buffet trays, stainless steel buffet trays. So I bought those as my evaporator trays and uh, rested them on top of the cinder blocks. Open firebox, the chimney drew the fire real well, um, but I'm losing a lot of heat out of the front, so I went down to home hardware and I found some, like, end roll of flashing or I don't know what it was some really like it was only about three feet wide sheet metal I explained it to one of the guys down there and he was like no I know what you want and uh, he found me like it was maybe six feet long so I cut that up bent it around and rest it up against it and uh, we did our best I mean I didn't know what the hell I was doing other than what the guide said and because this guide was an older guide uh, before the innovative breakthroughs in maple syrup technology, um, they're talking all about lacing and ribboning on the back of a spoon and the temperature of the maple syrup. So I had a candy thermometer I picked up from Canadian Tire and I tried to do all of that. And I brought out the turkey fryer and I finished the maple syrup in a cast iron pot. And, uh, you know, I did what I could do and it was pretty thin. It was, it was maple-y tasting, but it was pretty thin, but it was okay. I figured out all the stuff I didn't like about that setup and I set to work on trying to figure out another way to go about it. And I did a bunch of research on Google and I kept seeing people using barrels. So I built all that in the fall and then waited. Um, you know, so we tapped the trees this spring and uh, we only tapped, we had 12 that we tapped and um, this setup was so much better. And then the other thing I did, I did a bunch more research on how to really make maple syrup and Every article I read, every blog post I read, talked about something called a hydrometer, which is uh, a special thermometer made of glass that sits inside a metal test tube. Um, and it uses something called the BRICS scale, I believe. And the, basically the whole thing is it's measuring the density uh, of the sap, measuring the, the amount of sugar in it. And when you get to a certain point, that's when you truly have syrup. And so I was pretty skeptical about the hydrometer uh, just because of the investment. Um, but like everybody wiser than me was saying it was a game changer. And uh, holy crap. We used the candy thermometer. We used the ribboning and, the, and, and you know, the lacing on the back of the spoon. We thought we had what we had as Miss Lady's finishing everything off, right? Uh, she's watching, it's not, it's not floating, it's not floating, and then eventually it started to float, and then eventually we got it right where we were supposed to have it. She tasted it, and the frickin' eyes lit up. And our youngest had COVID this spring, like, brutal, had been in bed like 18, 19 hours a day. Came downstairs, we'd set up our finishing station just sort of in the garage. I set up some lawn chairs and some tunes and some blankets, and I brought the turkey fryer out, and you know, <laughs> kiddo's just sitting there, like, trooping through, trying to, you know, stay awake. All they wanted to do was crawl back into bed. But then we made syrup, and we got the vanilla ice cream out, and we were pouring it on the ice cream and the spoon. And I cannot tell you the taste. I, I can't describe the taste. Never mind that we've got cedar or pine or whatever wood we're using. I got a hint, just a hint, look at my shoulders going up, a hint of smoke in with this syrup and like it is phenomenal. We get all the amazing flavor of homemade maple syrup. We get friends, family hanging out, we get memories, uh, you know, we get the experience, we get out, we get, you know, moving in the spring after hunkering down all winter, you know, with your, your bag of hot wing ruffles and your, your Daniel Day-Lewis. DVDs. Now we're out in the bush. We're collecting the sap. We're lighting. That's why I built this big, this big fire pit here. I mean, there's other reasons because I'm always out here. I want to keep warm. But fundamentally, the position of the maple arch and the fire pit was not a mistake. This keeps Miss Lady extremely warm uh, during sugaring season. 
And then last year we were using these folding chairs and like buckets and stuff trying to, you know, for thermometers and like drinks and coffees and everything. So I built these four benches, two individual ones, two that could hold like three people, but could also turn into a table. So like every year you get a little smarter, you get uh, a little more prepared, you know, and you kind of figure things out. And uh, there we go. We took it down to bare metal. We put on three coats of stove paint. We've air cured it. We've heat cured it. Um, and there we go. I appreciate your time and thank you so much for watching if you'd like to subscribe if you'd like to like if you'd like to tell your friends i'd so much appreciate that that would be so amazing i really do value everybody who likes watches uh subscribes comments thank you so much um i'm just gonna let this fire die down and uh call it a day but uh i will be talking to you guys really really soon